Thank you, Bob Lynch. Thank you and your team at Americans for the Arts. You are tireless in advocating for the arts across the nation. And I'm here to thank you for your continuous work to advance the arts in your states, in your regions, for the nation, because really we are all doing this together. So I have had that opportunity to travel and visit with many of you during our travels, the 50 states. Together we've been to 170 communities, more than 400 site visits. We've participated in about 35 town hall meetings where we open to the community to talk about the arts and answer any questions from the public. And we can see that these old stereotypical beliefs about the arts and the National Endowment for the Arts, they're starting to shift. Because sometimes we hear people claim that the National Endowment for the Arts only funds these large organizations in major metropolitan areas on the East and West Coasts. But the reality is that way more than half, 65% of NEA funding goes to small and medium-sized organizations. And 9% of NEA funded projects go to tiny communities and an additional 14% of NEA funds are specifically focused on rural and remote areas and 43% of NEA funded projects serve neighborhoods with very high poverty rates. Sometimes we meet people who believe that it's either the NEA chair or the NEA staff who sit around and make decisions on which projects get funded and which do not. But the reality is that you, the experts in the field, are in your communities and you're the first to make the recommendations on which projects should receive NEA funding because every grant application that we receive is first reviewed by a panel of citizens from across the nation who are experts in the field and we've had and we continue to have citizen panel reviews from every, all 50 states and likely, if you, many of you have participated in a citizen panel review, and if you have, thank you so much for your work. And remember our very important partnerships. So in addition to the 16,000 communities that we have reached through our direct grants, together we reached thousands more through our wonderful partnerships in every state, in every region, with our state arts agencies, regional arts organizations, 40% of all NEA grant making funds go to our state and regional partners every year. And then the projects that we all do together, they demonstrate this both and concept that we can both honor and celebrate the arts specifically to every state and region, and at the same time, we can show our national presence of the arts together. Look how Poetry Out Loud is empowering our young people from every state of the nation and U.S. territories to poise and share their love of poetry. Look how the non-art sectors are recognizing the value of the arts through the Creativity Connects program. Look at the Blue Star Museums program where 2,000 museums across the nation in all 50 states offer free admission in the museum to service members and their families in the summer from Memorial Day through Labor Day. Look at the Creative Forces Initiative. We've now expanded to 12 sites across the nation. For our service members and veterans with brain recovery conditions, we are very appreciative of Congress, both the House and the Senate, for two earlier back-to-back -back budget increases in fiscal 2016 and 2017 years to be able to expand this military healing arts program. I hope we can ultimately expand across the nation. Someday, I envision that other non-art sectors are going to say we need to look at this Creative Forces Initiative as a model for showing the value of connecting the arts to individuals and communities just as you and the NEA and Americans for the Arts local communities, we've all done it together. And look at the research projects where uh, we're engaged in showing through hard evidence that the arts do play a critical role in our lives, from the task force that we lead with the 19 other federal agencies about arts and wellness, brain research that we're working with in Creative Forces Initiative, and the research that we're talking about, about the Bureau of Economic Analysis that shows that the arts as a sector not only grew slightly higher than the nation's overall economy, but it also reveals the arts contributions in every state. Did you know that jewelry making in Rhode Island contributes 224 
$1.2 million every year, 33 times the national rate. And Tennessee and North Carolina have the largest arts economies within their rural areas. And art-related printing in Wisconsin contributed $530 million to the state's economy. That's four times greater than the national rate. And you can find the facts and figures on every state on our website. But that's why I wanted to be here today, to thank you for the work that you're doing in connecting to the lives of so many through the arts and for working with us so that together we can fuel innovation and creativity and connect people to their heritage and traditions and strengthen the economy and revitalize communities and give us ways, especially kids who come from uh, neighborhoods that don't have as many opportunities to express ourselves more fully and contribute to our communities, introduce new ideas and perspectives, and move toward beauty and a quality of life that everyone deserves to have. We're demonstrating that the arts are a great investment, and by working together, we're going to reach a day where the arts are embraced as a fundamental and indispensable part of our daily lives. And it's not just some people's daily lives, but all of our daily lives. Have a great day on the Hill. Thank you so much.